What's going on, Foot Clan? We got a waiver wire episode today, and it is a tough one. There's a, a lot of players out there that we're not sure how much fab you should invest, whether you should burn that waiver priority. We're going to talk through all of them as the bye weeks begin, and we get you equipped for week five. Don't miss a minute. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave us some comments. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome in one and all. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway back with you. Deucer's Alley filled up oh, with to the brim. Deucers, yeah. Oh man, so Over, much deuce overflowing. It's there. Keep on deucing. <laughs> I will, Brooks. Thanks, Brooks. I will. Uh, we have some NFL news to talk about, but the headline of today's show is the uh, maybe underwhelming waiver wire. Yeah, or it's... or maybe it's more for the astute. Yes, right. Always. A little bit more precision to be had in this week's waiver episode. We'll talk about quarterback streamers. And uh, we'll, I guess, talk about the Monday Night Football game. Ooh. Daniel Jones just sacked again. Uh, just now. I am curious, and we'll we'll jump right into it. Quick reminder, though, uh, this is the last chance for the Foot Clan out there to help us win the Best Sports Podcast Award mm. from the Signal Awards. Which, uh, to uh, according to our power rankings, have the coolest trophies. So we would like a cool trophy in the office. Who doesn't like a cool trophy? It's a trophy you could kill a man with, <laughs> and that's really the staple oh, of you, a good trophy. Like, what is the weight of this yeah. trophy? Some trophies, if you wield them and you would do, you would swing it, it would break apart before impact. Mm -hmm. This is a trophy that would not break apart before impact. No, full impale. And yeah. that's what I go for in my trophies. So if you want to keep us safe and uh, equip us, uh, footclanvote.com. It's really our best defense at the is, office. This is for safety. Everyone grabs a trophy. We need a not. What, what do we got? Like nine people working here? Yeah, we got to get. Yeah, more. we don't have. We've only got a couple signal awards. So. Yeah. Look, every time that doorbell rings, <laughs> I I grab that signal award. Never be uh, too safe. JIC. Uh, it, it makes me want to share this story with the Foot Clan briefly before we get into Daniel Jones. But um, <laughs> we do have a tradition here at the office that um, if a solicitor approaches, the because because we have no soliciting signs, but those are all over. Yeah, I mean they're all over the place. But solicitors weird. they they have a blindness to them. Yeah, I was gonna say it's really weird that these people are out here like their job is to sell stuff and they they don't know how to read. Well. You see, Mike, if they were to read that sign, they would not have the potential to make a sale. Anyways. Oh, we, I didn't see it there. We do have a fun <laughs> tradition where Papa Josh has to answer the door and everybody else flips the lights off <laughs> in the actual suite. And that has been very entertaining. No so, one's here. No, but, but the lights always go off mid-conversation. Yes. So that the solicitor sees everyone shutting down the office at 11 in the we'll morning. Cl close it up. Out for the day. Um, but surprisingly, we don't need to buy a bunch of paper products. Um. All right, Monday Night Football. I'd be curious if, like, was this a defining moment in the decline of Daniel Jones in your mind, or was this just, we don't have an offensive line, and this is what a quarterback looks like without one? It is both. It's both to me. I mean, could have signed him on a franchise tag. They're, could have done a one year. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. But we really, did a long term deal here. It, it wasn't long. It was like oh, what, it was, three years. I mean,. I almost reshared my tweet from March when they when they signed it, but it was it, it eighty two million fully guaranteed, That's, up to an additional thirty five in incentives, four year, one hundred sixty million dollar contract, top ten paid quarterback in the league. There was no reason to do this, none whatsoever. When they did it, I got I mean, obviously, all the Giants fans were very upset with me, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, they should have they should have absolutely franchise tagged Daniel Jones. 24-3, Seattle's defense causing absolute horror in the fantasy or, or joy, jubilation. Sure. I mean, if you went into Monday Night Football 
on either side of having the Seattle defense. That was the storyline. I saw people up 32 points facing the Seattle defense and losing. Sheesh. Uh, you know, wasn't really a big day for the wideouts on Seattle's side. Lockett four for 54. Had it been four for 53, I'd have won. My matchup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, DK Metcalf, three for 34 and a touchdown. Kenneth Walker had a big day. He he did, but at one point was, uh, I believe, th three or four carries with a touchdown, but negative yards. It was. You were watching. You were watching just, with paranoia. The nice thing about Kenneth Walker is he's a big play breaker. Yeah. So I, there was there wasn't concern at that point. It was just the like, if you have a touchdown but you have negative yards, does your touchdown still really count? Daniel Jones. This is fun because I saw this last night. Daniel Jones was the leading rusher. Matt Breida was the leading receiver. And so they just all switched roles. The Paris Campbell leading passer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did take a sack <laughs> to to add to the 10 that Daniel Jones took. And uh, look, I the Giants were very fortunate last year. They, they had a, a very good record with some maybe uh, less desirable underpinning statistically. And so far this year, the Giants and Vikings, who were both very fortunate on, uh, in terms of how the seasons ended up, not looking great. Both one and three. Yeah, I I do believe that this would have been vastly different with Saquon Barkley. I I think that the way they utilize him, the ability to uh, quickly get the ball out to someone that can make plays, um, a threat of a running game, it, it could only help Daniel Jones. So. Watching that game, I just kept feeling the absence of Saquon, um, you know. And but that that was the situation. So if Saquon misses another game, which I don't think any of us expect, he seemed like he was close to going this week. And we'll talk about that on waivers. Like I'm not, I'm not into picking up Burita anymore because I expect uh, Saquon to be back. But that'll change the the equation for for Daniel Jones. The uh, the Giants also just something to pay attention to. I get the the offense it was putrid. Really, nothing happened for them. But there was a pretty seismic shift at the wide receiver position. Darius Slayton ran the most routes of the wide receivers. But then it was Wandale and Jalen Hyatt. So Isaiah Hodgins and Paris Campbell were uh, out there fewer. And so fewer routes, fewer opportunities for them. I, Paris, I mean, when he played, he was in the slot. So he was still getting targets just like when Wandale was out there. It felt like he was getting targeted heavily. Darren Waller ran – a ton of routes. He was out there, you know, just four fewer snaps than Daniel Jones. But there's uh, your storyline. Yeah. What? Whatever. What do you do now? Whatever connection happened in the preseason with Daniel Jones and Darren Waller that has seemed to evaporate at this moment, and it is really frustrating for fantasy football. I, I, th man, like while he's out there, <laughs> so it's it's not a it's not injury. It's not someone's playing ahead of him. It's just that Daniel Jones in this offense is so not functional at the moment, and he's not looking for Waller. Very disappointing. Yes, extremely. All right, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jamison Williams officially reinstated on Monday. Wide receiver uh, with a lot of uh, pedigree, a lot of hype, a lot of anticipation. And this offense is already cruising. So they're not expecting him to play a full allotment of snaps right out of the gate. I mean, they have had big contributions thus far from Josh Reynolds, from Khalif Raymond. Obviously, Amon Ra is their guy, but it opens the offense up. I mean, if you have Jamison Williams streaking down the sideline, it only helps benefit every other piece. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, it's great news for Jared Goff. Um, if if it means nothing for Jamison Williams himself for fantasy, there is, you know, I, I believe last year in all the games that Jamison Williams played, he caught one catch, but that catch was a 41-yard touchdown. And so Goff will have a new super explosive athlete on the field. Today's waiver day, and we're going to be talking about Jamison Williams, whether we would pick him up, how much we would pick him up for. I am pessimistic on his outlook. I do not think he's going to be a reliable weekly fantasy starter. I know, Andy, you have shared earlier this offseason you think he's going to be an absolute superstar. Regardless of your belief, the 
the pathway and his special ability is worth taking the chance um, uh, because he has a special talent. Yeah, I and I don't remember what comments I made exactly. I think we both loved him coming into the yes. NFL. I don't – I would certainly uh, temper those words at this point in the season just from – the precedent that Dan Campbell has set with Jameer Gibbs, who's a high draft capital explosive player that is fulfilling a role as opposed to being a primary option. I, you know, we'll talk about him in waivers, Yeah, but I don't think that, um, you know, I certainly wouldn't be starting him anytime soon. Jonathan Taylor, uh, Shane Steichen says there's a chance he could play in week five against the Titans. Uh, it's been reported the situation still remains unsettled. All the language right now is coming not out of Jonathan Taylor's camp, but out of the Colts' side. This is so crazy <laughs> fascinating. This is like a true Michael Jackson popcorn gif of just like, yeah. I want to see what happens because it I seems feel like he like could just show up and play and we never hear another bit of drama. That Absolutely. is possible. That is what one, one option is he is the starting running back this week for the Colts. Next week. Yes, next week. Uh, in, or wait, no, in week, yeah, week five. five. You're yeah. right. Yeah, it could be uh, this week. Yeah, and 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 the story is over, and you know the credits roll, and and we just see what <laughs> kind of like, value we where have. Where was the climax? Right. Um. The alternative is that Jonathan Taylor sticks to his guns that have been reported that he doesn't want to play for the Colts, and they've activated his 21 day window. He has to play in order to accrue a year, so he has to get on the field. So w now it becomes a game of chicken if he doesn't. If he's like, I'm not going to play for the Colts somehow, where it's like, oh, man, you're going to get to that 21-day window. <laughs> Bush is going to come to shop. And it's going to be like, hey, you're going to get out on the field or you're going to miss a season. So. That could be the strategy. Take the 21 days maximum to try to pursue a trade. Yeah. Uh, you did get me thinking there, though. Where in the world does the phrase stick to my guns come from? What do you think that was? I'm on was it. someone uh, trying to get you to swap your guns and you're like, no, I'm going to stick with these? Yeah, I mean, you're like you should use these I'm going, guns. I'm going Wild West. You think so? That's uh, that is based. Jason, off of this is absolutely nothing. We yeah, don't to, don't ask me any questions for the rest of the show until I have an answer on sticking. No, oh, see, Al Borland claims to already know the answer. Go ahead, Al. It says initially it was the command to sailors who handled or or crewed the guns on military boats not to leave their posts even if the boats were captured by the enemy. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Don't leave your post. Stick it's to hold your, the line. Stick to your guns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But on a boat. Right, with guns. <laughs> Even if they were captured by the enemy. Yeah, that's a tough job. <laughs> Keep <laughs> shooting. <laughs> I mean. I'm I'm sorry to tell you this. Uh, I cannot come with you. <laughs> <laughs> I have been told, <laughs> stick to my guns. I'm yes. following the orders of my captain. Uh, Kenny Pickett, dealing with a bone bruise in the knee, could miss week five. This is uh this is are a, we really gonna miss him? Oh <laughs> no, but it seems to be a, a pretty big change because at first it was feared ACL, then it was looks like it's gonna be an MCL a couple weeks. Now it's a bone bruise, could miss week five. Desmond Ritter will start week five against the Texans. Arthur, I've got a plan. I don't know. I I, nope. I hate to admit this. I didn't listen to you guys yesterday. Uh, it's I mean, I, I tuned in to, like, uh, I think the Monday pun day mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. a couple of little bits. But did you talk about Ritter? No, not very much. And um, Mac Holland's going going angry man on the sidelines. <laughs> Desmond Ritter coming over trying to give him a – Give him a five. I feel like every target that Hollins got. Hollins was open all the yes. time. And he just, he, yeah, no, he had, uh, so he had three targets, no catches on, he played 79% Oh, he should have snaps, had a 70-yard touchdown. And he just, he had had it. He yes. Was, he, he wasn't doing the old, let's dap it up, we'll, we'll get him on the next no. race. He said, no, no, you won't. <laughs> it was, you, you're going to miss me again. I tweeted that video. It's It's funny. Uh, James Robinson hosted by the Packers for a visit. Oh, what? He's trying to. He's They're trying just to, doing him a solid. James Robinson's going on the tour. He wants to see every stadium. Oh man. Uh, Jahan Dodson, limited participant at practice on Monday. Turns out he did come out of the game. Jason and I were like, when we saw uh, Byron Pringle and Diami Brown on the field so much for Washington in a game that was very competitive, we were like, what is happening? Jahan Dodson came back in, caught a touchdown pass. But he was uh, he did leave briefly. Curtis Samuel DNP with a quad. Always worth watching that. Samuel misses time. 
and uh, we'll talk about the Thursday night breakdown because that's a Thursday night game, so mm-hmm. that's why those are relevant. Um, any other news? Brooksy, anything you've got? We're watching, but nothing now. Any scoring corrections in our league of record that might toss point to okay. five points my way? Not yet. You realize that uh, – here's a PSA. Don't change your lineup five minutes before the <laughs> before the game. Is this like the uh, when you're taking a test, stick with your first answer? It is basically me, exactly that. I am not a superstitious person. However, <laughs> let me explain two things that happened this week. And one, I pivoted five minutes before the game. Damian Pierce to Garrett Wilson. It was a three-point gap. I lost because of it. Last night, I was in a world of superstition because I needed Tyler Lockett not to score seven and a half points. I'm like, I'm just gonna. I'm not really gonna watch the game. <laughs> hey, first. Half I'm like, I'm went well. I, well, I didn't watch it, Mike. You know, <laughs> the, you know what? Another first snaps I watched. First three of the second half. You know who caught all three passes on all oh, three plays? Yeah, baby. Tyler Lock at the end of my week. I turned the game off. He never caught another pass. Never caught one before. How was you're it's a like, magical man? It's like the science. You know the photon science experiment where it's unobserved photons do right, something yeah, different yeah. than when you observe them. Uh-huh. Something's going on there. <laughs> That Neil deGrasse Tyson would be able to figure out when you observe yeah, this the is quantum stuff. Same thing with George Pickens the, a couple weeks ago. Unobserved players on your opponent's team don't perform. Don't watch them. All right, there you go. Sorry, guys. Um, this all would have came out on yesterday's show had I been here. <laughs> that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Brooksy, we're jumping into the waiver wire. Put me in, coach. What was my quote this morning about fantasy football to you, Jason? I believe the quote was something about fantasy football is for morons who want to be sad. Want to be sad. Okay. (laughs) Might might be over overplaying that a little bit. Yeah, I, I believe it was because you lost in three different leagues by less than a point. Yeah, yeah, that did happen this week. Um. All right, waiver wire time. A reminder, the website has our waiver wire rankings, thefantasyfootballers.com. What's nice about the show, though, is we get to, you know, the rankings do a poor job of contextualizing your situation. You you may need somebody to stash. You may need somebody to play this week. The bye weeks are beginning. The Browns, Chargers, Seahawks, and Buccaneers all going on bye and uh, you do have some players eligible to return soon. We talked about Jonathan Taylor, Cooper Cup, expected to be back at practice. They, the, the team said they don't want to be reckless with Cup and will determine when he will be back out on the field. They don't even need him. I mean, they got, they got Puka. <laughs> yeah, well, right now they kind of don't. And I brought it up. Last time McVay talked about uh, the return of, of Cooper Cup, it was like one to two weeks. From the time he was talking about him getting back, Jeff Wilson could come back soon. You know, Devon Achan has has really established himself. It reminds me of what DeAndre Swift has done in Philadelphia, where you don't, you know, you don't really take a guy out that is performing at that level. Greg Dulcich, Evan Hull could come back week six. Jamal Williams in week seven. All right, we've got four teams on by. And, uh, you know, when you talk about Saquon coming back from injury, you're like, I really hope he's back because you've got some players going into the bye. Kenneth Walker's on bye. The Browns running backs. Austin Eckler's going to get another week off here with the bye. Rashad White. So when you look at the running back landscape, it's not great this week. It's not great You know, we're talking about players with roster percentages that allow you to go and pick them up. So keep that in mind. But you've you've got no one on our list that you'd spend a maximum of 10% fab, probably 10 to 15%. No, yeah. The, 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 the hot story would be Javante Williams. He injured his hip flexor. The estimates of what that, we, we don't have enough information on the injury, but uh, the estimates you're seeing from, you know, injury experts out there. I, I pinged our guy, Matthew Betts. Uh, he said, I don't have enough information, but I would consider him highly questionable for at at least this week. Some people think it'll be a multi-week absence. Uh, so it's Samaj P. Ryan and Jaleel McLaughlin, which 
He is a. Uh, I mean, McLaughlin has he's got juice. He has some speed, you know. And he had a hundred yards from scrimmage this past week, seven for seventy-two, three for thirty-two in the air, and, and a receiving touchdown. It's when Javante left, and it was very early in the game. Like it didn't just go all to P. Ryan, which you kind of I I would have imagined it would have that would have been the natural move for Sean Payton, but. He had six carries for twelve yards, and McLaughlin had the the hot hand, so he was the one who got in. So they where where on. do you prioritize those two? Um, well, so P Ryan's available in about half leagues, so I would I would guess that most competitive leagues, he's on a roster. But if both guys are but, there, which one would you prefer to go man. after? Let's say they rule right. Javante out, and you know it's going to be those two guys. Who do you think has more fantasy production? Because P. Ryan, while he didn't have as good a game, he was on the field more, played more snaps still uh, than McLaughlin. He, man, he hasn't, it's not been a great year here for P. Ryan. I think I might take this, the upside, the unknown Me of too. the mystery box and see what I would, would happen. I'd be placing a low bid on both. I don't like. But who, who's, I mean, even if it's the same bid, you got to put one of the guys at the top of the priority. Who are you going I with? Mean, I'm talking like five bucks on P. Ryan and five bucks on McLaughlin. And not looking forward to the Jets matchup. Not looking forward to the Kansas City matchup. I mean, I understand taking the shot. You need to throw somebody out there. I'd probably still prefer to have Justice Hill by a little bit. Uh, last week was his return from injury. And he did. It won't show up in the box score, but he had an exceptional run, like a 50-plus yard run. It was brought back on a hold, but that, you know, on the field, it happened, so he didn't look like he, uh, you know, you, you look at the box score and go, oh, they're, you know, he was not involved or whatever. He looked bad. That that wasn't the case it's, on the field. It's messy in both those situations. I mean, Justice Hill has to compete now with Melvin Gordon um, and Gus Edwards and, and Kenyon Drake. And possibly uh, Keaton Mitchell. Who, oh, gosh. Who should be coming. He was, I mean, he's an undrafted free agent for the Ravens, but he's small and he's fast. I mean, they played. Like they Hill. played Pittsburgh this week, and Chuba Hubbard plays Detroit. Chuba had uh, 16 opportunities. Brooks, what did you just type in our Slack channel? Will you read that to me? It says this week sucks for waivers, <laughs> all positions. It's ha ha. It's a struggle. I'm really feeling it's that. It's a struggle. I'm really feeling that. Jalen Warren plays Baltimore. You know, Roshan Johnson was supposed to be getting more work. He didn't. Khalil Herbert was very good. And then you're in the you're in the kind of stash and pray to category of tank and uh, you know Matt Breida. I mean Jalen Moore and Chuba Hubbard. Are you putting those two guys above the previous three, McLaughlin and? Uh, it depends on what I need, but I think Chuba is my number if, one just because I think I know he'll get opportunities. Oh, but he plays against Detroit. Detroit. Detroit's I know. been great against running backs. My number one is going to be Jalen Warren because I still believe he is the now I believe he is the best running back on the Pittsburgh Steelers. He has the opportunity in the future to rise in uh, production and in value and over the course of weeks can just get more and more involved let, in the in the passing game. Let me get creative with you. If you're looking for a running back fix for a week, would you rather invest the fab here and take the shot at players that seem like they could give you nothing? Or would you go take the shot on a one-week rental of Zach Moss before a potential expiration date? Because there are probably managers that look at him or even like trading for like a gain well or trading for a an underwhelming other option. Right. Like, I mean, if you can get if you can get Moss cheap, I don't mind that. Because I think those managers might try to cash in on get yeah, anything for him. You, you, and we don't know. But we Taylor did. could play this week. He, <laughs> like you yeah, could, you no, could know, be getting nothing it's, from Moss. Look, it, you're playing a game of probability of with if, a bit blindly because we don't have all the information. But if Taylor doesn't play, then Moss is a good is a great None start. Of, it's tough because if it, the gamble with Moss is that he get all the work if Taylor doesn't play. Right. The gamble with these players is you have no chance of getting all the work for any of them. Yeah. You're no, playing it, committee versus and and here let's just throw the wrinkle in. Moss plays Tennessee. That's not good. No, it's not. Uh, you know, if you want to take a shot at just some gross waiver wire worthy running back, um, you might wait for drops to go through and then yeah. scoop up Tyler Algier, um, who will probably be kicked to the curb or offer 
something piddly poop from your roster to trade for uh, <laughs> Tyler Algier because he's at least in that situation he's playing against the Houston Texans. You could see a pathway to relevance falling are, to the end zone. Like I, I mean, Algiers stunk, but there aren't great options. This there year. are some teams that may accept piddly poop <laughs> for Algier. Yeah, I mean, I think most teams right now would be considering just straight dropping Algier. Yeah, that's that's probably going to happen this week, and that's a reminder. Like we, when we have this show, we don't get to choose who's available on waivers. But it's unfortunate. We can remind you to drop it like it's hot. Pay attention to who's being released. And also, because uh, I have been riding this way, Latavius Murray mm -hmm. is. I mean, like the 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 floor is is awful, pretty low. But at least for the last three weeks, I mean, that includes two touchdowns. But this week, there was no touchdown, but he at least got 6.6 .6 points. And when you are just struggling on your team for an RB2 of any kind, he at least has touchdown upside every week. All right, quick break. Back with some hopefully better discussions about wide receivers. All right, we're back into the waiver wire, and we're looking at the wide receiver position. A couple of most certainly rostered, but if they're not, please pay attention. Romeo Dobbs, mm -hmm. Joshua Palmer, Quentin Johnston, all rostered in 60% or more of leagues, but if they're not in yours, they're worthy of being added. There's also a chance, especially with Johnston, that he might hit the waiver wire with this with this uh, upcoming week because he's going into the bye, didn't perform last week, and there's a chance people just can't afford to hold him over on the break. So pay attention to those. Uh, Johnston will get worked into this offense a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, obviously he had plenty of opportunity, did not come through in his first real shot. It's it's tough when you see a player, and he had a drop. You know, the, He was struggling with those in, in camp. Um, it's hard to believe in him, but obviously the, the, the talent was there for him to be drafted in the first round. If you keep going on week after week after week, once he gets opportunity where he's not getting it done, I do think it, it might just be wise to stop caring about the name and move on. But if you need to start this week and you need someone who is actually available across most waivers, I think the name to look for is another rookie, Michael Wilson of the Arizona Cardinals. Michael Wilson was all the camp rage. And then comes out week one as kind of a starter, plays 90% of snaps. I don't know what happened there, but there was some issue where he basically got benched. The week two went down to 43% of snaps. It was kind of a big deal of like, you know, he's he's got to work his way back to the rotation, which he did the following week with 86 yards. This last week, back up to 70% of snaps, seven targets, seven receptions, 76 yards, two touchdowns, um, and they're going to be playing at home. So... You know, he is widely available. He's available in 90-plus percent of leagues. He's been very uh, very good, and the offense has been much better than people expected with Joshua Dobbs. And so um, they played very well at home. They beat the Cowboys on their in their last matchup where, where Wilson had a huge catch. So, yeah, I think he's on the radar for sure. And, yeah. you know, it, it's tough because you have production there with Michael Wilson. You don't have it with Johnston yet. Right. You're going into the bye. And the player that I, I wrote it in there this morning, like drop candidate uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, like JSN had like three catches for five yards last night. It's all short. They love running 12 personnel, so he's not on the field. Uh, I, there's something happening there where I'm, I'm going like, is the patience worth it with JSN? You're going into bye weeks. You've got injuries at the wide receiver position. It's just interesting to look at Michael Wilson and say, is he a better roster hold right now due to the amount of snaps and targets he has the potential to receive, not to mention the return of Kyler Murray at some point versus Quentin Johnson and, and JSN who have higher NFL draft capital, but who cares? Yeah, I, I would rather roster Michael Wilson than QJ, than JSN, or Jamison Williams. Three, uh, essentially they're all rookies, it feels like. Jamison Williams is not a rookie, but uh, hasn't yet started his career, it feels like. Uh, despite playing in six games last year. Uh, so let's talk Jamison Williams now. Um, Andy, you brought up the fact that Jameer Gibbs is being uh, pigeonholed into a role. Like, this is all we want to use you for, for this offense. And the offense is humming. And the Lions are winning. 
And I don't think Dan Campbell is going to sit there and say, well, because Jameson Williams is super fast and because we spent high draft capital, we have to make sure he's playing 80% of snaps. They want him to do a certain role. Some of the words that he said about Jameson Williams, they don't they don't make you feel good about the situation. They're like, we just want him to be reliable. We just want him to be a good wide receiver. Do the little things. Yeah, it's like, was he, he not? Here's my perspective on Jamison Williams. It is similar to that of Devon Achan, in my opinion. There are players that can go out and do something athletically that once they do it one time, they're established. And that can happen with Jamison Williams. Like, Khalif Raymond has had fantasy-relevant performances on 40% of snaps, 36% of snaps, and go out and get targets and make plays. Jamison Williams is capable of, and I, I would almost bet on it, that he's going to have a two-touchdown game this year where both of them are uh, a la Robbie Anderson style of the Jets where he catches two do big bombs or one's a screen he takes to the house and one's an over-the-top, and all of a sudden he's just on the field. So that I think that possibility totally exists the way that A-Chan is not coming off the field now. Yeah, I, I totally know what you're saying. I agree with you that he's going to have the big game. Where I worry that I, – I don't think that that will necessarily say, well, now we can't take him off the field. I mean, we saw last year. Last year in his uh, – it was his second game. He catches a 41-yard touchdown bomb. Like, that's why they have him there. The following week, 19% of snaps wasn't on the field after showing that 41-yard touchdown. The following week, 17% of snaps. It was just like, man, I don't care. That was well, a cool play. But It's still coming back from the ACL. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. It's a, It really is. And, and and you, if you don't have the luxury of Jamison Williams and letting, you know, watching him on your bench, then don't go out and invest a bunch of fab and then regret it and then wish you had spent it on a player that could help you today. I think Jamison Williams is a hold. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I would, would agree. spend maybe, I, and I don't think it will get him, but I'd spend maybe ten to fifteen fab on it. Yeah, t ten is the number for me because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, whenever you have a player who's played in six games, wasn't utilized, didn't do much, caught one pass over the course of six games, the the opportunity was there, you know, and and they he never really. I know he was coming where, back where from was the ACL. Gibbs drafted what pick number? Twelve. You know where Williams was. Twelve? Twelve. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, so I'm I'm a little bit pessimistic there. Now let's talk about because you're not going to start Jameis Williams this week. No one would. Um let's talk about if you need a start this week. Uh would you rather start Michael Wilson, grab Michael Wilson, or in the same game, I'm just curious. Yeah. He should be brought up. T. Higgins went down in the games T. Higgins or Jamar Chase has missed. Tyler Boyd has been a very valuable asset. They're against Arizona. They follow that up with Seattle. and um, But Joe Burrow looks like he can't run an offense right now. So would you take the shot on a week one? I mean, if you grab Tyler Boyd, you're only grabbing him to start. You could play both those players this week. If you want a preference, I'm taking Michael Wilson. Me too. Because I want a play that's more than four yards down the field. I feel like Tyler Boyd – I mean, look at last week. What did he do? Four for 26. I mean, I think he could get to five for 31, Jay. Maybe even six for thirty six. But I want I would like a touchdown. I'd like a pass that, you know it's so weird. Everything is a check down right now. Yes. Like who do you think wins that ball game? I don't even know what the line is, but I right now I'd take Arizona to win the game. The line is the Bengals minus three, favored on the road. I'm gonna put money on that game. Arizona's playing great. Yeah, and the Bengals are playing the exact opposite of great, but um <laughs> You know, I the the but you can play both this the week. rosters. Yes. Yeah, the yeah, Bengals yeah. have a much more talented roster, top to bottom, than the Cardinals do. So that that's interesting. Let me bring up another name. Who I, I've is been it? Jaden Reed. It isn't Jaden Reed. Oh, okay. I like Jaden Reed. I want to talk about Absolutely him. Absolutely need to talk about I him. I know who you're bringing up. No, for me, it's Michael Gallup. Yep. Michael Gallup has looked really good the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, 92 yards, seven targets. This last week was involved five uh, receptions for 60. They play the San Francisco 49ers, and you go, well, that's a great defense. Yeah, but that's also a great offense. And some of the problem with the Cowboys' offensive players is that they've just been kind of dominating people, right? Like this last week against New England, it was 38-3. to And so Gallup was fine. Gallup was 5 for 60, but he, did, he wasn't necessary in the second half of the game. Um, this is a game where I would imagine the 49ers are favored. <laughs> and so you might have to keep throwing. 
And the 49ers. I, I think he's a good start this week. 49ers, right now, they're 14th on the season. Uh, so they're just middle of the pack as far as guarding wide receivers. So that's where you make a decision, Jason, about you, you might get Gallup for nothing, for, for a buck. Yes. Whereas Michael Wilson, Tyler Boyd, you're probably competing for them. Uh, I would I would still rather grab Michael Wilson for the hope of what a long special term. rookie can be in long term, but I would certainly go Michael Gallup over Tyler Boyd, like without without hesitation. Do you have any interest in Wandale yet? I have a little bit because the the I mean the, the I'd rather routes, have him than any Kansas City wideout right now. The routes went way up, so from twenty two percent of the snaps up to sixty four percent of the of the snaps. Six targets was five for forty, so it's. If you're in a PPR, you're like, oh, okay, that's at least I'm getting some points here. But he, like, no one has separated from the wide receiver crew still. And at this point, it looks like it. The if anybody's going to do it, it will be Wandale. I want to talk about Jaden Reed real briefly, and maybe it's better for a dynasty context. Um, we, Mike and I are both uh, on this week's dynasty podcast, and we're talking about trade targets. Um. Jaden Reed is one for me in a dynasty league. Like I, I made the investment in Michael Wilson. I traded very little to get Michael Wilson before the season because I saw the path for him to become something valuable. Jaden Reed is an eyeball uh, decision, a trade target. He passes every test to me. He's very fluid in the field. Um, I think everybody's looking at Romeo Dobbs and, and Christian Watson saying, well, he's just not going to be able to have an uh, – the ability to contribute. I do not think that's the case. I think Jaden Reed has the potential to be, um, you know, regularly used and maybe even carve out a role above those guys. I think Jaden Reed is very, very good. And I know that that's, that's just film to me. I think he's passing the test. I completely agree that he looks outstanding. He looks fast. Um, and the way they, they're utilizing him is very smart. Uh, it, the, the problem is, is what you said. I think Dobbs is the number one read in this offense for love, and I think he'll stay there. And then you have probably the most talented players, Christian Watson. So Jaden Reed is good and he's talented, but I do think oftentimes he'll be the third. He'll be more like the slot guy. So if you're in a full PPR league, might be a little bit better for you as they, they settle into roles. We still haven't seen um, more than half a game right now with all three active so it, he he's someone I want to I want to have on my roster I want to keep my eye on because he looks good to the eyes um, but I want to see how the targets are distributed because even though Jordan Love has been great for fantasy and his touchdowns per pass are through the roof he hasn't been putting up a lot of yardage so he split that three ways or four ways with Musgrave um, it, it, you know it gets a little scary thankfully they play against the Raiders this week Tied into options, Cole Komet had the huge week, 7 for 85 and two touchdowns. Jake Ferguson was uh, 7 for 77. Dude, Fergalicious, man. Uh, you had Higby get a contract and then get 11 targets in the offense. Are you chasing those numbers? I, I'm open to chasing Higby's targets, but that's assuming that Cooper Cup is not playing. <laughs> like, if when it's Puka... Cooper and Higby, I just I mean I can't imagine that he sees another eleven target game the rest of the season. I still think people need to pay attention to both Logan Thomas and Zach Ertz. Uh, Logan Thomas had been injured. Uh, he in the game he was hurt. He scored and ended up. It's incredible that two for twenty two and a touchdown was the tight end six on the week. Oh, man. but he's getting he's getting a ton of snaps. Like he he's going to play eighty plus percent of snaps. He's the primary pass catching weapon in that offense. Uh, Sam Hell seems to look to him, and I don't think you're getting goosed with Logan Thomas in your lineup. And Zach Ertz went right back to ten targets in he Arizona. Did. So you, you can certainly do worse than either of those players. I think they're fine. The, and you don't Zach have to pay Ertz, for them. Zach Ertz, five of those targets were on the final garbage time drive, which was incredible. Four of his receptions were on that drive, and he should have had a touchdown with twelve seconds left to go that he dropped. Um, it was kind of egregious right at the end of the the garbageiest of times. But, uh, you know, the, I, he is still involved in the offense. I want to go back real quick and just say the, the number one pickup for me is Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson right now, we're four weeks in. And in three of the four weeks, he's had seven targets. You, you know, targets are where, where you're looking. You're, you're looking for volume. Uh, obviously, it hasn't necessarily been there. Week one, seven targets. He had two fantasy points. Didn't work out. But if someone is getting at the tight end position, 
seven targets in 75% of their games so far, and it's on an offense that projects to be good, and it's on an offense that has used the tight end for a long time, he, he would be the guy that I feel most confident about just kind of plugging in weekly and not playing matchups. The other guys, I think, are more matchup plays. Interesting tidbit just to throw into the mix there, Schoonman. Schoonman. 56% of snaps last week, a, yeah. a season high. Hendershot which, was hurt, so – well, I'm not sure what the injury status is for him, or does does the schoon man make a move here anyways? I'm standing by my drop pits for Ertz. <laughs> uh, Pitts was two for 21 last week. Pitt, yeah. Pitts is, a, Pitts is absolutely a must drop. Must drop. You, can't, you should not roster Pitts anymore. Johnny Smith outperforming him. Darren Waller and Dallas Goddard, those names are coming up. And, look, there's something to be said about not sitting in your own poop. Sure. Like just because yeah, sometimes you got to change your pants. I Not mean, always, and I look but I, sometimes it's almost impossible for me seeing those names saying, "Hey, I'm going to put Dallas Goddard on the waiver wire." You had a head coach come out today, and 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 the quote is just great and awful. It was still part of the plan. Like whenever you have to reassure the community that Dallas Goddard's still part of the plan, what was the discussion like yesterday regarding Goddard? Uh, that it, it's been really disappointing and the fact that it's been every week and it's been that way with a new offensive coordinator, a new system, it, it is very frustrating. Um, we do have years of him being valuable. We do know he is a talented uh, tight end in his own right should the opportunities come his way down the field. We know he can do it. So he's not someone I'm looking to drop. He has seen seven targets and Two of his he is games. on pace for 55 receptions. I'm not hitting it. 374 yards Whoa. and no touchdowns. Yeah, I mean it's it's been bad, but I think he's the kind of tight end that you could move on from. Like I'd rather have Ferguson on the roster. Yeah, I mean if Fer Ferguson. Do you, do you not agree? Uh, I think I would give it another week. I I know it's I know it's so hard when you've got a guy going four bad weeks. Same with Waller. Waller's matchup this week against the Miami Dolphins, that's a that is a tight end matchup to target. You're going to get a lot of anger um leaving last night's game, probably from Waller, definitely from the fans, from what is going on. You know, you look at the last at the end of that game when Daniel Jones threw a pick six at the goal line, and Waller was like, You throw it to Waller, you got a touchdown there. Instead, you throw a pick six. Like, go back to the film figure things out Waller was on the field 92 percent of snaps so um I'm not moving on from Waller at least not this week against Miami um but I but I do think both Waller and Dallas Goddard they they you need to look at their matchup every single week and you need to say do I like the matchup do I want to target this matchup or is there someone on the waivers I would rather have and I I'd be willing to roster you know two tight ends if my second tight end was Waller or Goddard for the potential sure, yeah, upside and good matchups. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, Waller and Goddard represent potential ceilings that a lot of these free agent tight ends don't possess. Exactly. And so that's kind of the situation you're in. It probably makes sense to just bench them if you don't want to go through it. But, um, you know, Kyle Pitts, on the other hand, I think you can just cut yep. and let somebody else pick him up and start him for a few weeks for no points. Defensively, Let's look at some options here. Um, you know, the lowest rostered, highest potential, in my opinion, is the Detroit Lions oh, taking yeah. on Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. Yep. At home. Fully agreed. At home. The Lions are the, the – Aiden the Hutchinson. Go hunt. <laughs> Go hunt Bryce Young and you shall eat, yeah. young man. Yeah, the the Manders yep. are, are playing uh, – uh, they're the Thursday night matchup, but they get to play Justin Fields. I know – Fields had the big passing day. I don't think that that'll happen against Washington. Well, e even in the big passing day, um, you you look at the Denver Broncos defense last week. They got a touchdown on defense from a fumble from Justin sure, Fields. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think you can have both. I think Justin Fields can have a good fantasy day and a terrible real life day where the Commanders mistakes score a are lot. made. Exactly, he's, he's still mistake prone. So I think the Commanders are a great play. Um, another team. Look, if things change in the NFL, scripts don't always stay the same. But as of now, through one full month, the Arizona Cardinals have played good defense against good teams. 
and the Cincinnati Bengals have just given up nonstop points to DSTs. They Joe Burrow's taking sacks all he over can't the place. Move. They've lost T. Higgins. He can't move. They can't protect him. He's on the road. If you want to talk about a defense that's pretty much 100% available, or maybe we're just talking like DFS, cheap, nasty, awful defenses that you wouldn't usually start, there you could see you could see a, a touchdown on defense here. Well, and isn't Miami the defense taking on the Giants this week too? That would be one to yes, target. Yes, that would is. be one to target as well. All right, let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. Well, Mike, I'm gonna hand the baton to you because you, we we're talking about that matchup a moment ago. Who's your streaming quarterback? It's option? Joshua Dobbs, who has been a top 10 quarterback in two of the four games. Week one was an absolute disaster, but other than that, it's actually been pretty good. Even week three, when he was the quarterback 16 against the Dallas Cowboys, he still put up 17 points, and he's doing it because... 12 just, attempts on the ground last game. Exactly. He's running 41 yards, 55 yards, 48 yards. I mean, this, these are, this is a delicious... Delicious floor that he is giving us, and him making the choice to run so much. This is, it's. It feels like the team is had like after week one was was so rough that the team just said, "Go do what you do, man. We traded for you. Go try and win some football games." It's pretty excusable. Week one, he was added so late into the off season. Sure, yeah, yeah. To the to this team and had you know all of a sudden you're the starter. Remember they weren't going to reveal Clayton Toon or Joshua Dobbs, right? Uh but from that time, I mean, it has been, like you said, it's been good. I'm, you know, he's on pace for 816 rushing yards in the three games since that first uh, week. And they're design runs. You you watch mm -hmm. the games. Like I tweeted this past weekend. It is actually a delight. It is actually fun to watch the Cardinals offense play, which did not seem like a possibility. And then they bring in Joshua Dobbs, 41 pass attempts, completing. I mean, he is completing 71% of his passes since week one. Which he also yep. completed 70% in week one. He's playing great. He's playing good. F and, and they play Cincinnati and they play at home. So I think that that one is at the tippy top of my favorites to add. I, I threw Sam Howell in there. Yeah, yes. it makes sense. Yes. Threw for 290 yards against Philly, ran for 40, had a good performance. Uh, they take on the Bears. You know, you should have a good floor there. Sh Chicago's defense is not good. I mean, Russell Wilson was worthy of a start last week. And. So I think Sam Howell, it has been rough. We've talked about it basically being his rookie year. Hopefully he can kind of uh, grow on last week's performance. Yeah, Sam Howell was very good last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. Their secondary is really, really hurt. They were out two more safeties this last week, um, and Sam Howell took advantage. So I'm going to play that same matchup uh, with a quarterback who's looked good this year. He just hasn't been throwing pa passing touchdowns. It's so touchdowns. crazy, man. It's so crazy. It's insane because Matthew Stafford, has, here's, his, here's his yardage on a weekly basis, 334, 307, 269, and 319. So and probably how many touchdowns? Three total on the season. He is on pace, and one of them took overtime to get to Puka um, for that touchdown. He is on pace for 5,200 yards, which is just – incredibly outstanding and 12 passing touchdowns those numbers they don't they don't add up the the yardage is the predictable stat the touchdowns are not the sticky stat that's where Kyron Williams has scored so many touchdowns on the ground that probably a bit like golf last year in Detroit where Jamal Williams was scoring a million touchdowns yep you just need the right matchups where it's like oh it's going to be much harder around the goal line when you get in the red zone to run on the Eagles than to throw on their injured secondary right now um there's a chance that Cooper Cup is there, so I, I think Matthew Stafford's in a really good week, uh, a really good matchup. Sam Howell had a great game against the Eagles. Uh, Mac Jones, Week One, had a great game against the Eagles. Uh, Kirk Cousins, I think, was like the quarterback one on the week against yep, the Eagles. So, he was. Um, I think you could start Stafford this week. Uh, Herbert is on by, and just Geno's on by, Watson's on by. Are the like we're trying to these are the streamers are lower rostered guys, but I think C.J. Stroud is still lower rostered mm -hmm. as well. C.J. Stroud looks like he might be not a streaming quarterback. Like he he might be every some, week someone you just put in your lineup and you're like, I'm I'm cool. I'll ride with this. He's been top twelve the last two weeks. The last three weeks he's had over twenty fantasy points at the position. I want he's, you guys to guess how many awesome. interceptions he has this uh, year. I I know, Mike. I already know. 
No, zero. Yeah. yeah. Rookie quarterback, zero interceptions. Uh, super impressive. Uh, did you see the press conference with him? I did not. Talking that about, I, did not. I mean, leadership stuff. I mean, g getting up there and saying like, he was talking, it was a lot, you got to go watch it because I could not summarize it very well, but it, you know, to the extent of like, we want every single Texan fan to be proud to put on the jersey on Sunday. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it was just impressive. He's an impressive young man. Uh, the current passing yardage record is held by Andrew Luck. Uh, 4,374 yards, and C.J. Stroud is currently on pace to shatter it with 5,100 passing yards. I, I don't expect he will throw for 5,000 yards, but he's just been abs – he's he's fully legit. He is real. you got to well, make I'm that transition as quick as possible before other people catch on because everyone will catch on at some point that C.J. Stroud is a his, very good quarterback. The schedule – like Atlanta, it, it it's fine. He does get the Saints after that, and then the bye week. But then it's Carolina, Tampa, Bengals, Arizona, Jacksonville, Denver. I mean, he's got a good run coming up. Let's have a brief discussion on Joe Burrow. Uh, I don't know. How, I don't know how much you guys talked about it yesterday. I'm sure there was a good amount of discussion, but he's coming up and drop questions. You know, we we put it out on social media. We say who who are you, you know, thinking about dropping? And Joe Burrow's coming up. And what I want to highlight here is that Joe Burrow. Clearly dealing with injury. Uh, T. Higgins might miss this game. They have one of the most difficult schedules the rest of the season. The Bengals, I think this is going to be a lost one for them. I think this is just going to be one of those weird years where the injury and the bounce of the football and getting into rhythm and, like, it's not coming together for them. You know, you had the offseason tumult with Mixon, and he's been okay, and – uh, Jamar Chase is frustrated. And then, like I said, they have a terrible schedule. So you're going to have to make Joe Burrow start decisions based on what he's done so far and bad matchups going forward. So are you are you just putting him on the bench? Are you taking the week off like you did with Justin Fields? Yes, that's that's how I'm going to handle Joe Burrow. Or are you just playing him against Arizona? I, I'm i okay playing him against Arizona. I I mean, I, I'd probably play all these other guys we just talked about over him, which is insane. But Burrow... The, the history is too large of – you don't just take four games and be like, well, Joe Burrow sucks now at football. It, no, it there are things that are going wrong. And I put him on the bench, I stream another quarterback, and I don't drop him because that's – dropping Joe Burrow feels like something that really can come back and bite you in the butt. Yeah, if, if it's, it's so funny in the draft season. We kept talking about Joe Burrow – being this year's Justin Herbert, the pocket passing quarterback that is being drafted too high, and because he's being drafted so high, if he doesn't throw for forty touchdowns like Herbert didn't last year, that he would be this year's kind of bust pick. Well, last year what happened to Herbert was he broke his ribs and he lost wide receivers, and then he really stunk through the middle of the year. If you kept playing him, you were making a mistake. Well, that's what's happened to Joe Burrows. Joe Burrow, he's injured. Now he's lost T. Higgins. And if you keep playing him, you're going to be making a mistake. However, the end of the year, lo and behold, Justin Herbert is actually a really good quarterback. He got over the ribs. He got his weapons back. And then he was, you know, the the quarterback 11, 3, 9, 10, 12, 9 towards the end of the season. So I think that's the, the, that's the prescription here for Burrow. You don't drop him. You definitely bench him. I think you try to trade him if sure, you get a good game, sure. too. Coming out of the bye, li listen to the schedule coming out of the bye. San Francisco. On the road, Buffalo, Houston, who quarterbacks don't put up numbers against, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Those are the first five out of the bye week. His playoff matchups include Pittsburgh and Kansas City on the road. So I'm just saying there may not be the path for Burrow to – like his numbers aren't like middle of the pack. His, his numbers oh, are, are, are 31st, 26th, and 28th in the three games he didn't throw a touchdown. In the games he threw a touchdown, which is one, he was 21st. So, look, I – Everyone, like you said with C.J. Stroud, you got to be ahead of it. I still think you can trade Joe Burrow because of the conversation yep. we're having. So yep. don't drop him. Trade him. Trade him on the promise of him being old school Joe Burrow Certainly, if, if you don't believe. Certainly if you need a roster spot where we're saying don't drop him, bench him, sometimes you don't have the luxury to do that with bye weeks go coming up. And whenever we say that advice of like must bench, like a Waller or a Dallas Goddard, 
if you if you need to drop them, then trade them. They still have trade value because of what their draft capital was, what their names are. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. We have Hungry for More tomorrow. Thursday night preview, some mailbag. we got starts of the week coming up uh, on Thursday. We've got the fantasy face-off and the Wheel of Shame. We've got a lot going on, and I'm sure a lot of NFL news is going to break over that time. Last reminder, head to footclanvote.com. Help us equip the office with some uh, kind of sustainable we gotta, weaponry. We've got to protect ourselves. Yeah. Uh, footclanvote.com. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.